is happening. So I'm sorry to report that uh, I ate Jason Harvey for lunch. Okay. Again? Yeah. So, thanks for coming. Oh my gosh. I was convinced that nobody was going to be here because everybody was going to be too busy lining up for Jason Frank. Oh, wait. Ah! You guys having fun? So hey, I feel lonely. so the, the title of this panel is a little bit misleading because when I was on the phone with my friend Karen and she was talking about a panel with Jason, I was like, I hate that guy. I don't. I went, we're having we're in a huge fight, and I don't really want to do a panel with him. And so they named it the book was called Combat Academy because apparently we're fighting we're in the room. Yeah, we're fighting. <laughs> Plus, after we uh, we discussed it, we we figured there's probably enough conflict in the world. <laughs> we don't need to rehash any conflict. So we're just going to talk about loving... Everybody gets up and loves so like, oh, yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> burning things as this they leave. This panel sucks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm glad I got a microphone. Since we're in the same room together. What's the point of it? <laughs> well, they can hear our thoughts if we're like... Oh. Okay, right there, I swear to God, I swear. All I hear is wind. <laughs> hey, yo, how do you feel about seabirds? Seabirds? Yeah, you gotta live your life with no egrets. <laughs> I don't know. You're a dad. You should appreciate that joke. Okay, so here's my new favorite one. Okay. All right. So I get the the, uh, the deodorant. Okay. Okay. <laughs> So uh, it's it's this one is called the Swedish Chemist Shop, and a man walks into the chemist shop and he says, "Good morning, I would like to buy some deodorant." And the man behind the counter says, "Ball or arsehole?" <laughs> and the man says, "Neither. It's for my armpit." <laughs> There are children in the room, and they will figure out what you just said. Uh, at some point, everyone uses deodorant, Paul. Do you hear the gears turning over here? They're like, all right, I'm putting it together. Ding, ding, ding. Oh. Scarf for life. Don't use the deodorant in that place. <laughs> Meaning sweet. Yeah. Hey, it's nobody cold there. Nobody needs deodorant. Nobody needs deodorant. Nobody needs deodorant. And the Swedish people, they don't have sweat glands. They don't need them. It makes them less attractive. <laughs> you know, you can't call the Swedish chef anymore. That's, because, I mean, that, that is a Why, is it, on, is on it the like, Swedish is people. It, is it not politically correct? That is correct. People in Sweden don't cook. <laughs> Well, they don't have to cook because everything is smoked. So you guys, you know, Jason and I have known each other for 8,000 years. And we, we wanted to share with you some of the, frankly, the, the difficult trials and tribulations of being Vulcan Skull. We're going to bring you to the inside of the experience. First day. Gentlemen! Welcome to the TV show you're lucky enough to be cast on. Here's your dressing room. Dressing room. Oh. This is Paul and I for about eight seasons. I was like, this, we don't get our own rooms? And they're like, oh no, you guys are a pair, so it should be fine, right? <laughs> so we're basically in a closet. Amy Joe's got a palatial suite. And she's about this big, so she doesn't need <laughs> She's got, and then, I'm not kidding, she got two couches, like an easy chair, a vanity, and believe me, she needs that. <laughs> and we have like one chair and a light bulb hanging from yeah, the ceiling. Yeah, I'm not kidding you, like if we would take naps, which we would do often, one of us couldn't get the couch, the other got the floor. Yep. And the person yep. on the floor was right up against the wall. Like yep, it's so true. It basically was like a chair closet that they gave us. It was so bad that Amy Jo actually took pity on us and was like, you guys want my dressing room? Like, she yes. did. Yes, we she did. did. <laughs> but I'm not kidding. To this day, when we do cons, first question out of their mouth is, so you and Paul are going to do it? Great. Will that be one room 
or two? Uh, they always ask us that. Is that what we'll say Camel Town Rule? I mean, I keep laughing. I mean, have you ever seen two straight men try to change clothes in the, in the same room? Like, all right, go to your quarters. Don't look at me. Don't look at me. And to answer the elephant in the room, boxers, briefs. <laughs> And really ugly boxers too, like 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 old Polish man tablecloth boxers. It's like an Irish boxer. My mom is an old Polish man. <laughs> Your mom is awesome. My poor mom is taking so much abuse this week. That that is true. So Jason Jason only really happens during the week. J Jason's mom's name is Lenore. Yeah. So she doesn't like the Eeyore Lenore jokes. <laughs> so hey, you guys, you know, being both in school, we felt uh, so lucky to have gotten a job acting, right? Because there's so so many, how many actors are in the room today? Anybody, any actors here? So you know, you know, we aspire to be performers, right? Because we want to share um, comedy or drama with the world. And certainly we are grateful. Yeah. We were grateful. But, you know, when, There's a limit. when they make you change clothes in the back of a van when you're on location, you start feeling like, maybe I'm not on the show that I thought I was going to Let's get more specific. Change clothes in a van in the winter after you got out of the lake. Yes. Oh. Yeah. That's true. Yeah, don't pity us. You laughed when it happened. You laughed when you saw it on TV. So do you guys remember that Power Rangers episode where Bulk and Skull were all muddy and were kind of like swimming in the lake? Yeah. So that was Kenneth Hahn Park outside of here within Los Angeles. And it was winter. Call time 4.30 a.m. Yeah, because you got to do makeup. I'm like, we're going in a lake and getting covered in mud. Why do we need makeup? They're like, well, it has to, it has to match with the previous scene. Like, okay. So it's like, okay, there's your wetsuits. And we're like, what, 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 what? So you know, there's a little tiny normal man size wetsuit for Jason. And then apparently they had to have a wetsuit for, wetsuit for me custom made by somebody. <laughs> now you know, wetsuits are gauged by millimeters of neoprene, right? So the thicker it is, the, like the deeper you could go in the ocean and the more cold you can withstand. So Narvi had like a spring suit on, which was like nothing. And mine was a five mil suit. Now, the, pr the problem, how do you guys feel about sausages? Okay, because, so, but, and, and, and we had to first squeeze, we, I had to squeeze myself into the wetsuit and then put my costume on. Now, if you look at the episode, the, I think in the bloopers, maybe in the end credits, like if I were to relax, the suit would automatically go right back to its muscle memory position. Boom. <laughs> and bending my limbs was like, Ugh. and then if I relaxed, it would go boom. It was hilarious. Well, and of course, the whole re thing of, it, of us wearing the suit was ridiculous because the whole point of a wetsuit is that it allows a layer of wetness to get in, traps it, and eventually warms it up with your body heat. So when you're just jumping in and jumping out, it never warms up. It keeps the cold water close to your skin yeah it was freezing yeah you know you you, you know from watching the show that Wilkins will have a lot of costumes right tons of you know what are we are you know, are we italian chefs are we bunny rabbits are we cops or monkeys or whatever right <laughs> now the problem with television is that the schedules are so compressed that every department is kind of behind the the, the ball like they're behind in the game they're constantly trying to play catch up now, for the Rangers, it was pretty easy. You just go in the rainbow clothing room and pick whatever Red Ranger shirt he's gonna wear today. But Bulk and Skull had sometimes really elaborate costumes, like monsters, or like, I had a big tail, or you're a beautiful princess. Thank you, Paul. Well, <laughs> wonderful being here on this Sunday. You are the best bait ever. But the problem, <laughs> the problem with our wardrobe department is that they were a little too far behind. And occasionally, the costumes weren't done. And you know what that means if you live with a seamstress or a seamster, is you find a pin in your armpit. Or in your nether regions. And you know, Bulk and Skull are constantly running and jumping and falling, and, and this is seriously, every week it would be, 
And I'm waiting for myself to get stabbed by the pin that inevitably I know is going to be multiple pins sometimes. So that starts a kind of a negative relationship with the wardrobe department. You know, we kind of say, are, are you going to torture me today? And they're like, well, you know, we're doing our best. You know, here's your corn on the cob outfit. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. There's kids here. I'm just not going to follow that one up with it. Okay. Uh... <laughs> The great Aztec people and their mascot, Corn of the Cop Man. <laughs> well, should, we, should we field some questions? I don't know. I'd rather keep complaining about my life. <laughs> you know, the people always ask us about pranks on Power Rangers, and, and the fact is there was a lot of pranks on set. There's, true, there's more pranks than anything else. Well, because we're supporting characters. You know, you know how we come in. We come in, we say three things. In the middle of the episode, we come in, we get something splash, splashed on us, and then we show up at the end for the aww, right? Aww, that Vulcan skull. It's, always losing a limb. Yep. And so, in the interim, there's, you know, hours and hours and hours and hours of us just sitting in the room listening to Jesus Christ Superstar and a record player over and over and over. My mind is clearer now. <laughs> so that that's where that's where all the pranks came. And our, and, it's because we were just bored. Yeah, and, and so we, and they would also go through phases. Like like one month it would be the entire, swords. Yes, yeah, my swords. Ah, ha, ha. Another month it'd be like fire. Ah, ha, ha, ha. Um, oh, there was the, the month of, of uh, random dead arms. Yes. You remember that one? Yes. Yes. We're like we're like. And what we would do is, we would we would start like, you walk onto the set, get her, ah, and then five minutes later you roll, and like, oh, I'm starting to get it out. And so they would slowly get closer and closer and closer to the point where we we're actually rolling the camera, till it was literally like, okay, and roll cameras, speed, power ranger, C402, take two, ready, set, and bam, 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 action. <laughs> I'm not kidding you once. Once I'm sitting there, I'm standing there, okay? Cameras are rolling and suddenly this shadow just passes over me like 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 a 747. <laughs> and I look up just in time to see Polly full flight! Oh he's wake up! Oh, that's it! Yeah! Scarf in time! Cut! You said I got it! <laughs> So you know, years after we finished the show, Narvi would call me up occasionally, and he said he would say, "I had the dream again." <laughs> and the dr tell him, go on, tell him, tell him about the dream, Jason. So the dream is a nightmare. It was complete PTSD, Paul trauma syndrome dream. <laughs> I would have this reoccurring nightmare that while we were sleeping in the dressing room. Paul would be on, he'd be the one on the couch, I'd be on the floor, and then Paul would roll over on you. <laughs> and of course, it's also because while we're, while we're filming half the time, I'm hoping I get to the ground second. I'm hoping he hits the ground first so I can land on him. Because if not, if Paul, if I go first and Paul lands on me, we're gonna have to do it over and over and over and over. So it's like, ah, ah. Oh, I'm wrong, 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 i am wrong i Cushion my fall. Cheer the wind beneath my butt. <laughs> I want to open a Greek restaurant called the Greatest American Hero. <laughs> Too soon? All right. All right. Anybody got any questions for us? Because we can keep complaining all Like, night. I had no questions after we start talking about PTSD and corn cops. Yeah, like, right. yeah, I got questions. <laughs> well, you know, the movie Maze Runner. Oh, forget it. <laughs> There's someone way the hell in the back. It's all you. You can oh, choose them. You can choose them, man. Yeah. Oh, uh, this was one of 
wondering. Yeah, no worries. Just was wondering for. Uh, oh yeah, there we go. Um, for Green with Evil, I forget which episode. There were like five. Of them. Um, at one point, y'all are in the bus, and um, one of you says, "You know, I want my mommy," and I believe it's Skull says, "I want your mommy too." Was that ad libbed? What, what's the question? Was that ad libbed? Uh, yeah. <laughs> And somehow that made it past BSP, Broadcast Standards and Practices. But then again, so did all the uh, sexual harassment and racism, too. I mean, come, you know, the 90s were a time, and there were there's things on that show I watch, and I'm like, oh, God, that's terrible. Co costumes. Not cool sometimes. Honestly. So bad. Yep, there you go. Add them. So, as you were saying earlier, obviously, you guys are amazing. Uh, throughout the, every show that you appear on, you have done multiple costumes and you've been different characters throughout the year. So my question is, is that, if, was there any particular costume that you wish that you would have done back when you were doing the show? Like something that you haven't, that you guys didn't do before, or that, you know, you wish they, you would, Bulk and Scully would have done, or, but you guys never got a chance to do it, even throughout the years? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I, I want to do Bulk and Skull in space. I mean, I, I mean, who wouldn't want to steal a 5X space suit that was custom made for you? Right. <laughs> That's what happened on Samurai. They made that Samurai outfit, and it happened to be my birthday, and I was like, guess what? Mine. <laughs> and I still have it. I actually wore it to Burning Man one time, and people were like, what are you doing? It's 110 degrees. <laughs> Cultural appropriation in the desert. Exactly. <laughs> I'm Paul and Jason. The, I'm the huge Pounder fan and knows the history by heart. I have, there are so many things I remember you did, it's hard to figure out what to ask you first. But for now, my question is, since the beginning of Turbo, how was it like when you guys got turned to monkeys by Ogar? Were those real monkeys wearing your clothes, walking, doing the scenes for you? Were you voicing them? No, that was us wearing monkey suits. <laughs> Which we normally do when we go clubbing on the weekends. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but the chimpanzee union wouldn't have it, you know? You're taking bananas out of the mouths of the real chimpanzees. <laughs> okay, so, so I used to have a, uh, a, a sculpture of a chimpanzee on a stack of books. Oh, yeah. And and the chimpanzee was holding a skull, you know, like yeah. like um, Hamlet. Alas, poor Yorick, I knew him well, heard his show. Um, and we used to laugh, we thought it was so funny. Um, you realize when we were playing monkeys, we were working on the spin off this movie, but at night, we were doing Hamlet. So one day, Polly looks at that statue and goes, that's not funny anymore. <laughs> you know, uh, uh, chimpanzees are very, very strong animals, right? They can take your arms off and beat you with them, or they can throw a refrigerator. So I, I told this story a little bit earlier in the hall today, but I'll share it with you again. Now, there are three rules that when you work with uh, with chips. One is don't look them in the eye because it's a challenge. The second is don't eat or drink around them. And the other is don't touch their butt because it's kind of a tender area, you know, and they don't, they don't like it. So when they so they tell you these rules and they're like, the you know, production's very serious. You have to be careful with these animals. And so I'm like, and I'm, I'm ready, I'm ready. And then on set, in my blue junior police outfit, they, I'm drinking a Coke, they walk up behind me and go, hey, Paul, and I turn around and they throw the animal at me. I catch him, I'm drinking a Coke, I'm holding his butt, I'm looking him in the eye. And I realize, I'm, I'm dead. I'm dead. And then it kissed me, so. So the, the, they were very, very well trained animals. They were cool. So they, they didn't hurt us. All right, who else? I won't speak for the taste of men. Oh, this guy had his, his hand up. That's awesome. We got the mic over here. We'll go back. Yeah, he don't need that. Um, so they were talking about doing a Bulk and Skull pilot show. Can you tell us a little bit about what that was going to be about? What kind of shenanigans you were planning to get into? It was going to be about 22 minutes. Thank you for your question, sir. <laughs> That's how long our careers would have lasted if we had done that. Um, you know, I'm really glad that spinoff didn't happen because we got five more years on Rangers after that. If we would have done the Bulk and Skull show, it would have been one season and done. It was, probably, so, it was such a, uh, a pastiche of, of different ideas that never quite congealed. Well, was, and they did, you know, the focus group testing where they get people in a room and they ask them, you know, do you like Coach or Pepsi or whatever? 
Well, they focus group tested with kids the idea of the Bulk and Skull show, and the kids all said, where's the robots in Kung Fu? <laughs> and I, I can't argue with that, because that, that's what I said, too. I was like, where's the robots in Kung Fu? <laughs> so they, they were doing kind of a Pee Wee's Playhouse type thing. Kind of, yeah. But, I mean, it, quite frankly, the Bulk and Skull humor was, we always thought of it more as kind of like adult swim humor before it was an adult swim. Mm -hmm. So it, it didn't quite translate to kids. Kids were still not coming up to saying, I love you. They come up to say, I bam, you ruined my childhood. <laughs> In the first season of Rangers, we were abused at grocery stores by young, by young folks. <laughs> well, you know, you're three or four years old. You don't, you, you know, it's like when you meet Dexter, like, <laughs> Let's be out of here. Right, kids? Right? So... <laughs> exactly. Exactly. See what she did? She did this. <laughs> That's how kids feel about Bulk and Skull. <laughs> so the Bulk and Skull show was going to be Bulk and Skull running a hotel, but like an old New York-style hotel where there's residents and not guests, per se, and one of them was going to be Elvez, the Mexican Elvis. <laughs> oh, i no. Who we met. And he brought the Chihuahua. Big old mutton chops. Chihuahua had mutton chops? Absolutely, man. And he was mustachioed. I mean, I've never seen a Chihuahua with a mustache that big. I mean, it really was faulty towers with the Mexican it, Elvis. It was. Yeah. It was, yeah. Oh, and, the, and the gag was we're just trying to keep, keep it together, you know, as the place falls apart or whatever. And then Elvis would then sing from the balcony or something. It was very odd. So we're talking like the sweet life of Zach and Cody, pretty, pretty much. Pretty much, yeah. exactly. Yeah, so it was, they wrote the pilot, and there was a bunch of development art, but we never shot anything. Yeah, which is probably fortunate. Because we got to keep going on Rangers, you know, which, which eventually ended up awesome for us, as we had all that character growth and got to kick ass for 37 seconds and count down to destruction. And, you know. Yeah, you keep telling yourself that, Paulie. That was awesome. I, I, that could have been that, that Japanese guy and that and that piranha trawling outfit I broke his neck. <laughs> Look at it! I grabbed him, I'm like, yeah. I was like, can you put the sound effect in? They were like, that's a little much for the kids show. <laughs> Whatever. Whatever. Oh, Alright, who's that? Alright, so two questions. Uh, also, thank y'all for making this weekend awesome. Woo! Oh, thank you. Woo! <laughs> My well, hey, hey. There's no show without you watching the show. You know, it's the it's, 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 <laughs> I'm not going to lift you up. <laughs> no, but Kia and Karen did a great job, yep. didn't they? And Mikey, of course. I mean, they themselves into it. I'm psyched to be here to support my friends, young yes, entrepreneurs. Um, so, two questions. Okay, uh, so taking naps in your dressing room, who was Big Spoon? Also, <laughs> uh, you always performed most of y'all stunts yourselves, and you, as you said, there was no mad there. Was there ever a time that you got seriously injured, and what did the show do about it? Shockingly, we never got seriously injured. I never got we hurt. never did. No. And, and so we had stuntmen one. Once, maybe twice. I don't remember the second one. The first one was literally uh, the green with envy. You know, they introduced Tommy. Uh, we get scared and we run and we do a, ba a flip into a dumpster. And Ed, who ended up playing Lord, I almost said Lord Ed. <laughs> That's who we called him. He was Lord Zed. Yeah, uh, but his he, name was Ed, so we called. Yeah. Yeah. He, that, that, that was the first time he was on set. He was your stunt double. And who was mine? It was he. And it was he and that's right. It was the first time they worked on set. So that was the only time I remember us having stunt guys. It's because we weren't athletic enough to make it over the front of the place. You know, it was pretty low budget on the show. So generally the lack of stunt people was because they didn't want to spend any money. You know? Do you remember the thing where Bolt goes into like a 50 gallon barrel and like the barrel rolls down a hill? And, oh, yeah. and, okay, well that, that's like two two by fours with my boots on it. You know, so they didn't even want to hire anyone. They, they, they wouldn't let me do that. But yeah, so, so um, after the movie was the beginning, the Power Rangers movie that we shot in Australia. That was the beginning of you're no longer allowed to do anything really dangerous. Like with the skydiving thing, you know, skinny guy in a fat suit, not cool. Get a real fat guy, we can still skydive, but but not me. They wouldn't let me do it. Swallow, be the eagle. Correct, Armando. I don't do none of these things, sir. <laughs> all right, I'll be the eagle. I, I'm, I'm not gonna, you know. <laughs>
So I do have a quick question. I've been hearing stories about you two and one other person almost getting fired from Power Rangers. Which day was this? Was Which we time was this? Because we were late. We were late. We were on meds. We were. We ran over the producer's daughter. <laughs> ran over the producer's daughter again. <laughs> ran over the producer. You know, our attitude really went downhill on the show when we came into work one morning and there were six brand new Suzuki Samurais in Skittle colors in the parking lot. <laughs> and all of the cast was given a car. And we got just enough to get literally an outfit to go to the party. <laughs> yeah, it hurts, doesn't it? Now, Everybody what, what, hurts what, what does give me solace is that there are no Suzuki Samurais anywhere in the world anymore. <laughs> right? Because it's like an animal cracker box with some wheels on it, and they, and they die very quickly. So, <laughs> eat that. <laughs> it's a paperweight. It's more of a time. Yeah, so other than that, I don't remember exactly when we almost got fired. No, well, we Actually, don't. okay, I'll give you this. We were on really good terms with the producers because we worked our butts off, and they they did appreciate it. I mean, they really did. Um, we, we, we gave creative input. We gave our hearts, our souls. We were relatively punctual. Um, we didn't often have prima donna episodes. Often. You know, when push came to show, we got disciplined once or twice, and we're like, okay, sorry, I was being an a-hole. Believe it or not, we fessed up to when we were being complete jerk-offs. We got fined a couple times, yeah. like a, a couple grand for outbursts. Burning yeah. things in the halls. Well, one, one, of, one of the times we got fined was um, we had a director who was the young, very handsome, dark-haired husband of Priscilla Presley. And uh, and for some reason, it was the episode, or it was like a fitting or something for the Elvis costume. Woo! And I'm in the talent hallway, and I look up, and it's Priscilla Presley, and I'm like, <laughs> God, I gotta go hide in the bathroom. And everybody's like, Don't go in the bathroom. That makes it worse. <laughs> <laughs> and I start screaming. And this guy got fined for having an outburst in front of Priscilla. Oh no, 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 no. That's not exactly how the Priscilla story went. All right, tell me. Do you remember it? I, well, clearly I don't, since you've just corrected me. <laughs> then, okay, so this was uh, this was the first episode of season two with the uh, Road Warrior outfit. Ah, right. And she was visiting the set with. The kids. Ah! And so she, so the, 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 the assistant director, Larry Litton, who was actually a good friend, so what happened literally, I'm not kidding you, was in good humor, said, said, no, nah, get off my set. And I said, Larry, go beep, 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 beep. <laughs> and Priscilla Presley turns around. There's Polly. <laughs> she goes running up to the boss. Can you can you believe what Paul Schreier said? I heard him say, <laughs> and they bring him in, and they're like, Polly, why why did you say this thing to Priscilla Presley? Uh, Polly, we're, we're going to have to discipline you for this. And they're like, and he goes, was it me? It was Darby. They're like. Oh, well, that makes sense. Okay. <laughs> we both got fined a thousand dollars. Thanks for reminding me that I was wrong. <laughs> wrong. <laughs> That's right. Anytime we'd have a kid on set, we'd say Priscilla. Because that, that, that was the code. code. That's that, right. was, that was the code to not say a bad word. Yeah. Priscilla! Priscilla! Oh, okay. Priscilla. But then we did teach all the kids in Australia that one particular bad word oh, is yeah. how you say... We, we said something bad on set, and someone forgot to say Priscilla. And the kid's like, I can't believe you said that. We're in Australia filming, right? Yeah. And so I'm like, no, 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 that beep is American for good day. I'm like, oh, all right. And so like, we're walking off the set, and they're like, hey, Paul, Jason, beep. <laughs> and their parents are like, <laughs> Go on, man. What's your question, sir? Uh, well, well, this may not be something you guys were involved in, but was there any conversation or discussion about making either one of you guys your goal? 
Uh, I don't know uh, what well, there was, there, there, there was like a whiff of a rumor that it was going to be him, but they, you know, they just took a second look at his face and they were like, oh. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but my gams go all the way. <laughs> <laughs> it's also how big my nose was before the nose job. <laughs> So that wouldn't fit in the actual helmet. <laughs> yeah, no, because you don't want to break up Vulcan's skull, right? Yep. So you can't, that wouldn't work. It wouldn't work. Yeah, you know, they used, uh, they used us to, like, improve the spirits of the crew. So they would n not let us work all day, and they would save us for, like, 3 o'clock. Because they knew we would, we would run one and done. You know, one take because we rehearsed all day. And the crew would be like, oh, thank God we can go home. <laughs> yeah, we were on really good terms with the crew, you know, because we spent all day, first of all, talking with them all day, you know, yeah. um, and then at the end of the day, it was great because, you know, they always say the hard thing about doing uh, comedy on film is that you don't have an audience. We did, the whole crew, you know, so we would try to break up the crew in whatever it was we were doing, you know, it was great, it was fun. Well, we knew it was successful if we could make the crew laugh, yeah. you know, if the crew was laughing, then we felt good about it. Yeah. You get, you get some grip who's tired and they've been on the set all day, you know, you can get some guy like that, you know, they're not gonna, they're not gonna so much as go, <laughs> yeah, I'm glad you're not dead. They would never even say that, right? <laughs> so if you can get someone like that to laugh, it's a good day. You know, we, we were really lucky. We got to do some amazing comedy events. Like, I watch some of it now and I'm really, really proud of the body of work. Um, they got real lazy, though, near the end of the series. And instead of actually thinking about writing something narrative, the script would say, and this is no BS, Bulk and Skull do something funny. It's like, well, that's imaginative. You got paid for that. Good for you. Any other questions, folks? So, if y'all could, would y'all go and do the orange and purple ranger? Oh, the new, the new costumes you're talking about. Yes. You mean the, the walking, talking fat joke? <laughs> I'm a board. They made me a pig, you guys. I'm a pig ranger. And they made Narvi a parrot. Is that what that was supposed Which to be? Which we like to say is a, a reference to my Semitic uh, good look. Yeah, good looks. Yeah. It's a fine Semitic tapestry, you. Yeah. My nose. No. <laughs> Hey man, you know, pa pa Power Rangers do Power Rangers like the CIA. You think you're out, you're never out. <laughs> they will pull you back in whenever they want to. So, you know, I'm, I, I'm on good terms with the folks at Hasbro. They can make calls anytime. <laughs> Alright, cool. Um, you guys have been awesome all weekend. I appreciate you guys more than anything. But... I think Bulk and Skull have been chased by more monsters than anybody. Yes! What, what is yes. the- Yes! Those rangers don't know what the heck What is the most- the the Billy Love <laughs> Of all the monsters that have chased you guys, which one was the most, like, when you saw the monster, like, oh, it's gonna be fun running from this guy. Wh which one made you be like- I, I like that Thanksgiving episode, the turkey, turkey. the turkey, <laughs> the robot turkey, robo turkey hey, from hell. Yeah. I love that. That was- very clever. You know, those suits were pre-used by the Japanese show, of course, right? Yeah. So, I mean, once a year, giant, stinky crates would show up. And they would crack those crates. And uh, one time I was close to it, and that was like Japanese stuntman funk. Just like... <laughs> then they would fumigate them for breeze. It wasn't a thing yet. It was still the 90s, you know? <laughs> so Sun-in was a thing. They though. used... <laughs> Our Japanese stuntmen, they love that sun-in. So, the funny thing about the costumes is uh, the, the, the the bugs, as as we call them, uh, is that they were a giant, you know, foam. And what they do is they have them on on basically a stake, you know, standing up until someone used it, and, and they would you could step into it, but they zipped in the back. So in order to get air, they would take off the top, and the top of the entire thing would flop over. <laughs> but then the guy was still standing in it like this. We had a thing like this. We had a singer like, well, there's something you don't see every day. <laughs> and all the students were smokers. All of them. It's like ridiculous. They're like this amazing martial artist. And they're over there like, ah, ah, yeah. <laughs> no human being can kill me except for myself. <laughs> yeah, go ahead, man. One time. So. 
you talked about the samurai suit that you took for your birthday. Mm -hmm. And we've all heard the stories that Savan didn't want anything going out. And we've heard stories about rangers sneaking pieces of customs out. What's something you got that you really love? Oh, I, I took a well, watch. Certainly, I wasn't going to take the yogurt covered leather jackets. <laughs> Somebody tried to sell me one of my old jackets, and I was like, <laughs> You bought that? You dumb. <laughs> That's stinky. No, but I, I, I did take a few things. I have a few things. I have the one eyed bulk uh, eye patch, and I have the incredible bulkster 60s kind of orange visor glasses because they were mine in the first place. <laughs> <laughs> I've got one thing. Oh. It still stinks like you here, too. <laughs> you try to escape out of my trunk, Polly, I swear. I'll return you. All right. Back. Okay, so I'm not sure if, sir, if, this, if this is true or not, but I've heard for the old bulk of skull wardrobes, you two would trade thrift stuff, thrift shops. Yeah. Uh, army Navy surplus. Yeah, they would give us money and we would go, we would costume ourselves because we would always say, why did you buy that stupid? And then they would send us off to Army Navy to buy all the cool stuff. Well, no, no, no. It, were there any fun finds that you found that while you were doing that? Well, we do have a side note to that, and that was uh, Skull's T-shirt in the movie. So for the movie, they knew we did that, and they said, we'll do the same thing. And so we did. We went around Hollywood with them, and they're like, but some things we will make, okay? But other things we'll just buy. So there's a shirt that Skull wears, and what you only see it in one... Um, in one shot, that is uh, Albert Einstein with the theory of relativity, which we thought was funny because Skull was such an idiot. Um, they didn't get it cleared though, and it cost him ten grand. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Cost him more money than we made on the movie. There's a popular myth that you actually make money in show business, by the way. <laughs> Most of our, so much, so much of our stuff came from the former Soviet. Bloc, the Soviet Union, East Germany, and stuff. Like, because the entire Eastern Bloc must go, big blowout sale, you know? <laughs> All that stuff. You know? That's true. All right, where, where's he at? There, there you are. Hey, hey. So I was going to say, you guys are awesome. Um, so I know that there have been past actors like Rangers that have voiced monsters throughout and other seasons. Have you guys done the same? Oh, yeah. Yeah, a lot. Yeah, I, I know you did more monsters of the day. Uh, we all, at some point, um, even did putties. Oh. It was funny, it was Polly, me, and Tony Oliver, and I think maybe one other person, and one of us commented, you know, amongst the three of us, we have over 80 years of classically trained theater. Let's do this, gentlemen. <laughs> Oh my god, putting your education to use. <laughs> they did that because it was cheap, 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 cheap. <laughs> Welcome to Venus Island. You guys did dress like putties at the beginning on the beach. That's right, we were trained putties, baby. <laughs> um, hi guys. Hello. Um, I am Martin Potter's, I am Martin Potter's CEO. I'm on episode 16. I totally remember how is your character I think we're not going to see Canon, Canon, I'm going to see. Wait a minute, you're on episode 16 of Zio right now? Yes. And what, what was your question? It is, it is about the can opener theme. Oh, ah. <laughs> you know, sometimes we find something funnier than it actually is. <laughs> and that was a perfect example of that. Yeah. Like, yeah, we always, there's so many little, we'll call them microaggressions. Where Polly and I are just making jokes, trying to get the other one to, to laugh. It's hilarious. Okay? To us. To us. Yeah. Nobody else. Nobody else. We wanted to put a B-plot into the Power Rangers movie where because they like cut all of the scenes of us working for Ivan News, which is why we were in that one scene selling news or whatever. Yeah. We we're like, well look, if you guys if you're gonna cut us out of the movie, it's fine, I'll just go to the hotel pool again. But we think it would be funny if we uh, found a a quarter super glued to the ground and every time you see us it's an escalation of us trying to get the quarter off the ground. <laughs> yeah. And you can imagine how that could turn into heavy machinery and explosives. And for two hours, it'd be awesome. <laughs> they wouldn't go for it. They were like, no, go back to the pool. Uh, <laughs> Hi. So, Hi. Um, we know that Bulk and Skull had their own heroic moments, right? right. So what would be your favorite moment that um, Bulk and Skull were being heroes? 
Seven. <laughs> In episode seven. Oh, well, what is? Uh... Well, it's countdown to destruction for me because it's just you know that's the end. That's the the ultimate arc for us. You, you know? know what? I did see one on it uh, the other day. I saw a clip of it. I forget which one it was. It was one of the first times we had a heroic moment. We we're trying to find the Power Rangers, and we saw who it was, and we, yeah. we did this whole like Clint Eastwood thing. But our reaction, we found out it was the fan was like. Oh, come on! It was hilarious to me watching it the other day. It's like, them? Those? But they're. Just, oh! Oh! I remember that. That, that. that happened like six times and then we lose our memories like every time, right? <laughs> oh, narrative. Yep. Hey, this poor guy's had his hand up for like seven and a half days. Oh, I thought that was like a, That's a, a rocket pop launcher on a mech suit. Yeah. You thought he got like, like a cut and he has to keep it elevated? It's like low budget Predator costume. <laughs> Beep you! Now, um, my question is um, my, one of my favorite scenes for Book and Skull is uh, Food Fight when y'all stand yeah. up to the pudgy pig. Oh, yeah. What gave y'all, like, what was the context of that, like? Did y'all like do that yourselves, like to stand up to him, or was that written in? Because that was just hilarious to me. Well, generally the things we say are generally written in the overall <clears throat> circumstance. The things we do in the in the in the macro sense is generally our own performance, right? Mm -hmm. So they don't give you too much direction. Mm -hmm. So yeah, they, they set that scene up, but but like when when I like charge Zach in the food fight. Oh. And I do the bowl thing with the whipped cream, so like that, that that's yeah. me, where I'm like, give me the whipped cream. There was even, there was even a moment, that, do you remember this? There was a moment, I, uh, I, I remember seeing this a long time ago, there was a moment you're like, rah, rah, and he throws like that, ah, and you go, oops. And that was, probably told, like, uh, it was a rare thing where he dropped character and looked right at the camera and went, oops, and then he kept going. That made it in. <laughs> the thing that I threw, like, bounced off of the light and someone had to... Oh, uh, yeah. Was, and you thought they were going to call cut. Yeah, 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 yeah. But he kept going. They were like, no, because they didn't want to clean the whole room. <laughs> <laughs> but for that, I legitimately did uh, grab into some emotional memory recall. When I was in high school, I used to get busted for starting food fights. Oh. <laughs> for the record, you can condition a crowd for just about anything. And if they're used to it, they will react as though it's happening, even when it doesn't. So we had started so many food fights, some of them would be like, hey, Jim, hey, food fight! And then after a while, you'd just be like, fry, and then people would be like, someone throw a fry, and they start throwing it. We were able to start food fights by doing this. <laughs> they dragged in the principal's office, you're like, oh man, I just stood up. <laughs> Jason went to every high school in Southern California. <laughs> Kicked out time after time. Um, well, I was going to say, actually, both of you have been Rangers outside the show, so, um, in the comics, and and I mentioned to you, I'm a big fan of Hyperforce. Woo! So I did have a couple of questions about Hyperforce. Like, how did one was like, how did you get involved? Because it was a re obviously it was a real treat that we got an actual actor from the show as being part of the team. Melissa Flores who was the brand manager for Power Rangers at the end of the Saban era, and then later hopped over to Hasbro for a couple of years and has now gone off on her own and doing amazing things. Uh, so Mel gave me a call and asked me if I wanted to do it. And I was like, oh heck yes. Yeah, of course, you have to play a different character. Now, Hyper Force was difficult because because it's extemporaneous, we're ad-libbing, right? We're role playing. Um, you just can't hit the missile button and kill everyone. But that was part of the fun of it, was that, that you guys just yeah. had free reign to be like, Well, oh, but no, you don't, because it's the Ranger universe and you're a Power Ranger. So yeah. your first instinct needs to be to help people, not my first instinct, which is to, like, trip him and make something fall down. You know? <laughs> so, it like, there was a lot of responsibility, and Mel was always right off camera like this. You know, making sure that we didn't just launch all the missiles at the crowd, you know. <laughs> Did you get into trying to do season two? Because I know it kind of fell between the cracks when it got bought by Hasbro, and that was the excuse we it, were given. It did. It did. And and ultimately, you know, the, the folks at Hyper Rabbit, that was the kind of venue, the rabbit folks, um, they had a lot of other shows going, and that was a licensing deal. So they had to pay Saban. 
And so with the transfer, of course Hasbro was like, sure, it'll be four times more. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's like it became something that wasn't like financially tenable. Although in my mind, we totally did. <laughs> and I'm the boss. <laughs> hey, how are you guys doing? Yeah, man. What's happening? Hello. How are you? So my question is... <laughs> When y'all, when Fox tried to do y'all uh, spin off, what happened? Uh, what happened in terms of like, why didn't it go? Yeah, mm, well, I mentioned that a little bit earlier and it's because they, they tested it with kids and the kids were like, where's the robots and the kung fu? Well, and there was also, I mean, they also were trying to sell the bulk and skull, uh, uh, what is it, the good, the bad, the stupid? which was VHS that came out, and that did not sell very well either. So it, was a, it was a clip show where they just had our little bits, and that didn't make any sense either. When you watched it, there was no context, so. Yeah. Would y'all ever do one? Well, we're doing it right now. Woo! We, we, we live the Polka Skull Show. I mean, there's no, I mean, there's no crazy, like, deep Hamlet happening here, right? They wrote those roles right for us. They wrote both for me. And so, I, I you know, I actually am an idiot. <laughs> That's real. Yeah. Hey, so I mean, y'all mentioned earlier that y'all did some ad libs on the show. Like, what was y'all favorite ad lib that y'all did? Oh man, you know, it, see, ad libbing is difficult because some directors do not take it kindly. They they want they are like to the text. They want you to do the line. Now, occasionally, there's a couple like Terry who would let us ad lib. But you know, it's all, you know, you know the method acting thing. You know that whole thing where people like pull feelings from deep inside. Well, sometimes you don't have any feelings, and it, and you just your other actors are like waiting for you to feel something. You're like, come on! And especially with comedy, I mean, you don't want to be digging deep on that. Totally. So so ad libs sometimes we're okay, and sometimes we're not okay. It's hard to remember. I mean, I definitely like the you know, I want your mommy is like a pretty That's classic. That's my favorite. Because you know, yeah. I, I do. <laughs> All right, you guys. The sad thing to say is we are just about out of time, so we got time for one more question. We'll pick it right here. All right, Jason, why? <laughs> why not? It is meant to be. Yeah. Woo. Yeah. <laughs> right, who's up? Is it you? Is it you? All right. All right. Here we go. Um, how y'all doing? Um, Good, man. I just have um, to ask, like, um, I know next week um, it's going to be 20 years since that train has passed. I just want to know, what was it like being around her and working with her? Uh, she was she was the most educated out of any of us. <laughs> she was a trained engineer before the show. And she was very serious about her craft. She was often directorial and would try and tell me what to do. Yeah, yeah. Because she was, you know, she was one of the main cast members, and she had certain expectations. But she's a lovely person. She was a, a real sweetheart. Uh, she was a sweet, sweet person. There you go. Um, she was as gorgeous on the inside as on the outside. Um, when we did the Universal Studios uh, show, which uh, we did five shows in one day, it was supposed to be one show. They turned into five, um, and the very first, on her entrance, so it was, it was supposed to be like a 20 minute, hey guys, say no to drugs, sponsored by Dare. Yeah. Um, and it was supposed to go once or twice in the day. Uh, it sold out, because no, like most things, Power Rangers, they didn't expect it to be anything. Um, so we ended up doing it five times, and instead of in a small 200 person stadium, we did it in a giant 10,000 person amphitheater five times a day. Um, she came out for her entrance, and she was supposed to do a flip, and they were setting off fireworks, which was never rehearsed. So as they set it off, it threw her, and she landed on her ankle and busted her ankle. So she did that four more times that day, and then shot for the next six months with it. Um, and whereas Tui could be very serious, like Polly said, she could also be very gregarious. And so for the next five months, we shamelessly um, harassed her for um, walking with a limp. She thought it was funny. We even did a, remember we did a, back before Photoshop, you had a photocopier and an office, and so we went up to the office and we made a fake newspaper uh, talking about Tui Trang is introducing a brand new dance called The Gimp. 
Oh. <laughs> now to be fair, we w we would carry her around on a chair like the Queen of Sheba too. So yeah. uh, we mess with her, but we also I think we're the only people that could give her that kind of crap and she would take like it. A queen. And she loved it. So hey, you guys, it's awesome. Great to see you all today. Woo. Thank you for watching.